Hey guys, Rhett here. Thanks for watching. I want to talk to you today about something that I've changed my opinion on over the last couple of months um, and, and last, I would say, 6 to 12 months. I've really changed my thoughts on it. If you've been a viewer on this channel for a while, you know that the way I started my Section 8 journey and the way I got started in real estate was by using cash. So I'd use my own capital and I'd use the Burr method, which is so talked about today. Uh, the Burr method, as everybody knows, is buy, rehab, uh, refinance, rent, and repeat. The, the thing about Burr, it, it, it's a great way to add property and it, it's phenomenal, but we're using so much cash up front that what it does is it takes you 6 to 12 to 18 months to add another property because it takes us that long in a seasoning period to pull our equity out of a property and buy something else. Now, the Burr Method's how I started, and it's how I grew from one property to dozens and dozens and hundreds. But, with the resources that are available today, there are other ways to get there that I couldn't get to years ago. Like what? Well, 10 years ago, I couldn't find a lender who would loan me on $30,000 or $40,000 property. Now, my coaching clients in my program use lenders that do that every day of the week. 20% down, 25% down, and they're able to finance $30,000, $40,000 properties over the course of 30 years. It's crazy when you think about it. I have clients who buy property for $30,000, $40,000, they put 20% down, they're into something for their down payment, $6,000, $8,000 on some of these properties, and their mortgage payment every month is between $150 and $300. We turn around and rent that unit out for between $900 and, and $1,200. It's crazy, and, and you put a tenant in there, a Section 8 tenant, who is gonna be in that unit for 10, 20 years, you're basically locking in a, a, a five to $700 net profit per month for the next 30 years. It's crazy. That wasn't an option when I started. Um, and for, for the investors on this channel who, who watch along and, and those of you who invest, you guys know, if you've looked for lenders, how hard it is to find lenders who will loan on, on properties that are under $100,000 or under $85,000. There's usually a threshold when it comes to financing and using leverage because a lot of lenders don't make any money when they don't write loans for you know six digits or uh, you know under a hundred thousand dollars. <throat> so being able to use leverage early on in this process can help us if we use it correctly. Now a lot of people are afraid of debt. A lot of people are afraid of leverage because they don't know how to use it, and that's a good fear because. If you don't know what you're doing, if you're buying the wrong properties, if you're using leverage the wrong way, it can be the worst thing that you ever did. But if you understand how much leverage to use, when to use it, what to buy with it, then it can be your best friend. Now, when it comes to leveraging properties up front, for example, you might have $30,000. You can't buy a $65,000 house in cash. You know what I mean? It's just you don't have the money for it. But with thirty thousand dollars, if we buy a house that's worth forty and we finance it, we put twenty percent down. We put down eight thousand. Eight thousand is twenty percent forty. Put down eight. Maybe it needs twenty thousand in work. We put our twenty thousand in work down. We're into it for twenty eight. We still have two thousand left. You're into something now for thirty k. It rents for a thousand dollars a month. Your monthly payment on that, principal, interest insurance and taxes might only be 350 a month 300 a month we rent for a thousand your net on that is going to be somewhere between five and seven hundred a month it's crazy and these are real numbers this is what i'm seeing every day for my coaching clients so the ability to use financing up front has totally changed this game it's flipped it on its head and this was something that was not around 10 years ago i couldn't find lenders to do this 10 years ago it's an incredible, incredible resource to be able to leverage property up front when you are buying investments that are worth it and you are smart with your leverage, okay? 
I know the, the, the clients I have in my coaching program, we're incredibly smart with leverage. We don't over-lever ourselves. We take our time, we buy the right properties in the right neighborhoods with the right tenants in them, and we make sure that we're making enough money so that every single month, our net return gives us a high cash on cash return, but also it's worth it for us. It's worth our time. We're not trying to make $100 a month in net profit because if you're trying to make $100 a month in net profit and you have one issue maintenance-wise at the property, then your entire net profit for the year is gone. So when we are talking about how much money works, what works, how much money are we trying to make in the spread, which means if our uh, mortgage payment every month, and, and keep in mind your mortgage payment takes into consideration insurance, property taxes, principal, and interest, okay, those four things, those four expenses, that is what it costs us to open the door. That is our operating cost for the month, not including our property management, which takes 10% of gross per month, okay? So those are your five expenses that you can account for before the month begins. And the nice thing is four of them are wrapped up in that one mortgage payment, okay? Now, what can you not plan for? Maintenance, right? So, you know that if you're making $500 net profit per month on a property, over the course of 12 months, you'll make $6,000. It's phenomenal. When you're making $6,000 a year, and that rent is guaranteed every single month through Section 8, whatever the maintenance is, that is gonna be our variable, okay? That is what our variable is. We wanna make sure that that variable can stay low enough to where it's not gonna blow out our profit for the year. Now, how do we do that? We make sure that our net cash flow per month, net meaning what we take home after all expenses, will still be enough to cover maintenance. So if we're making $100 a month and we're only making $1,200 a year in net profit, and all of a sudden we have a plumbing issue that's our responsibility to fix, or uh, you know, an appliance breaks because we didn't do things the right way up front and we didn't buy new appliances like I tell you guys all the time to do, and we cut corners early and we have a bad net, one or two things of maintenance can cost us our profit for the entire year. It's not worth it. So by using financing, we can find ways to increase that net by being able to finance property 20% down, 15% down, 25% down, whatever that is, to increase our net cash flow for the year. Now, what kind of cash on cash returns are we looking for? For my clients, we don't go below 10, 12% cash on cash return. That is the absolute bare minimum that I'll allow my clients to take home. Usually on average, we're seeing somewhere between 20 and 30%, which I know it sounds astronomical, but that's just what we're seeing. Um, and it's craziness, but when you're only out of pocket $30,000 and you're renting units out for $1,000 a month, those numbers are, you know, they're, they're achievable. So I just want to hit you guys with that. Just some food for thought. I know on the channel, all I've talked about for, for a while is, is buying with cash, but I wanted to kind of touch on this because as things change in our market, as the economy changes, we're gonna to have to adapt. Investors always have to adapt. And when new opportunities arise for us to take advantage of, that's what we'll do. So if financing becomes easier for us to use and it's a way for us to scale and grow faster and, and become more profitable quicker, then we will use it. If it becomes more expensive and slower, we'll get away from it. But for investors, guys, we have to understand that we are always changing. We are always adapting to what's going on around us. And it's extremely important that we continue to change our methods and adjust our processes as things change around us. Because we just never know with what's going on in the world. We are in a constant, constant change always 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 and right now we're entering into uncharted territory inflation nearing 10 percent uh circumstances in the world that we can't control that are changing our global economy gas prices going up wars in other countries that are directly affecting us printing of money that's catching up with us 
so many things, the poverty, poverty increasing rampantly in our country. There are gonna be some significant changes that happen over the next couple of years. So we need to make sure that we're always looking to adjust. We're always changing what we're doing to make sure that we're becoming as profitable as possible, okay? So guys, whatever questions you have, leave them in the comments below. If you want more information on the coaching program, shoot me an email and we'll get started. Okay guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.